Hey there, and welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, I make short clinical videos that get straight to the point using images and animations to break down the information to the simplest form for you to understand. In this video, we'll be covering heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. So stick around. If you end up learning anything from the video or you like the way that I present the information, then I'll appreciate it if you can hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and also follow my TikTok. I just made it a few days ago and I'll be posting on a daily basis. Thank you. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, also known as HIT, is a severe complication that can occur in patients exposed to any form or amount of heparin products. Heparin, as we all know, is an anticoagulant medication. Patients who develop HIT typically present with low platelets, so thrombocytopenia. This is seen in about 95% of patients and also increased clot formation. This may seem counterintuitive because how do you have low platelets but an increase in clotting? So once we go through the mechanism, it will make more sense. But first, there are two types of HITs. There's type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is also known as heparin-associated thrombocytopenia or HAT. It is more common than type 2 and it is not immune mediated. It is a mild reaction with no severe complications and can occur as early as on the first day of therapy. Most important key point here is that continuation of the heparin is okay since platelets will spontaneously recover. So when you hear the term heparin-induced thrombocytopenia in clinical practice, they are usually referring to type 2. This is immune-mediated and can lead to life-threatening complications. It occurs about 5 to 14 days after receiving heparin. However, if a patient has been exposed to heparin within the last 100 days, antibodies may remain in the system, causing this reaction to manifest as soon as day 1 of re-exposure to the heparin. Lastly, in type 2 hits, all heparin-containing products must be stopped, so usually unfractionated heparin and also low molecular weight heparin, followed by alternative anticoagulation for the patient. For the rest of this video, we will focus on the type 2. Let's begin with the mechanism. So normally, platelet factor 4 is stored in platelets. Let's assume this is it right here in the green. Platelet factor 4 is released when platelets are activated to go form a clot. This function is to bind to the natural heparin during platelet activation to promote more coagulation and prevent anticoagulation. Platelet factor 4 can also bind to exogenous heparin with a much higher affinity. So in patients with HIT, when exogenous heparin is given to the patient, this platelet factor 4 may bind to it in the body, and this interaction leads to the formation of a complex called the heparin platelet factor 4 complex. This complex may trigger formation of antibodies like IgG, IgA, or IgM. And the key point is that these antibodies are specific to heparin platelet factor 4 complex. So these antibodies can then again bind to the heparin platelet factor 4 complex and form another complex. Let's just call this complex antibody heparin platelet factor 4 complex. The antibody heparin platelet factor 4 complex will then bind to the FC receptor on the platelets. Hits will only occur if the antibody portion of this complex is the IgG antibody. This will cause platelet activation, and activated platelets will then release prothrombic substances such as thrombin and more platelet factor 4. As this complex activates more platelets, more platelet factor 4 is going to be released, forming more complexes with heparin, and then that will form more antibodies, and this will lead to activation of more platelets and the cycle will just continue. With all these platelet activations, it creates a hypercoagulable state which will continue until the heparin is discontinued. To make things even worse, you have these macrophages that engulf the antibody heparin platelet factor 4 complex that's bound to the FC receptor of the platelet and remove them. This will decrease your platelets. Simultaneously, as the platelets become activated, they aggregate and platelet count drops as thrombus forms. This is how we get the thrombocytopenia. Because of the hypercoagulable state, some serious complications can occur, such as myocardial infarction, deep vein thrombosis, 
and pulmonary embolism. So it's imperative to effectively recognize the patients that may be experiencing HITS. And this is something that the pharmacist plays a vital role in. Our job is to monitor patients on medications for certain adverse effects. So let's discuss how to identify a patient with HITS. HITS should be suspected when a patient is currently on unfractionated heparin or low molecular heparin or have been recently exposed to this and have an unexplained drop in their plate Platelet counts. HITS typically presents as a steady drop in platelet counts, no fluctuations. The first step in the diagnosis of HITS is the calculation of the 4T score. This is a scoring system used to determine the likelihood of a patient having HITS based on the presence or absence of certain parameters. This is how it looks. It takes into consideration the percentage of platelet drop, the timing of the platelet drop, any examined clots, and other possible causes of the thrombocytopenia. A score is calculated and depending on the score, we could determine if the patient has low, intermediate, or high risk for HITS. If the score is low, heparin therapy may continue while the clinician looks for other causes of thrombocytopenia. If the score is high, all forms of heparin, including line flushes, should be immediately discontinued and treatment with an alternative anticoagulant should be pursued. This should occur while we send out the platelet factor 4 ELISA immunoassay. This is a confirmatory and more accurate test since the 4T score alone is not enough to make the diagnosis. The ELISA detects the presence of antibodies. This test is highly sensitive so HITS can be ruled out if this test is negative. Unfortunately, it has low specificity leading to false positives. This is because not only does the test detect the IgG antibodies, but also IgA and or IgM, neither of which is involved in the pathogenesis of HITS. Because of this, a positive ELISA immunoassay is recommended to be confirmed with serotonin release and assay, SRA test, which is highly sensitive and specific. In this case, they take a donor's platelet and in the presence of heparin, they add a sample of the patient's blood, and if antibodies are present, endogenous serotonin will be released. Platelets usually release this when activated. A positive SRA confirms the diagnosis of HITS, and negative SRA rules out HITS, even in the setting of a positive ELISA. Now we can discuss in detail about the management of these patients. But please remember that management already started after we got a high score on the 4Ts score, correct? Because right after that, you have to discontinue all forms of exogenous heparin. Next, an alternative anticoagulant must be initiated to prevent or treat any HITS-induced thrombosis. As per the current practice guidelines, one of the following anticoagulants may be selected. Argatroban and bivirudin are both direct thrombin inhibitors. They inhibit thrombin, which is important for formation of clots. These two agents have a short duration of action, which is a good option for patients who are critically ill or those with an increased risk of bleeding or patients who may require urgent procedures at any given time. Orgatroban requires hepatic dose adjustments and bivirudin requires renal dose adjustments. Lastly, the APTT must be monitored for both of these agents to know when the drug dose is therapeutic. Next is fondoparinox, which is a factor 10A inhibitor. Although it's not FDA approved for this indication, Fondoparinox is considered safe and effective and is recommended by the ASH guidelines. An important consideration is that it is renally cleared and contraindicated in cranial clearance less than 30 ml per minute. So previously, treatment options for HITS focused on parenteral anticoagulants, but now there's evidence supporting the efficacy and safety of DOACs in this setting. Guidelines list rivaroxaban as the preferred agent with apixaban as an alternative. Dosing for these agents is extrapolated from dosing recommendations for VTE and the same contraindications, so both of these must be applied to the patients with HITS. And that will be all, folks. Short, quick, and straight to the point, but hopefully you learned a lot from it. If you did, then hit the like button, subscribe, and leave your comments down below. Also, follow me on Instagram and TikTok for more content like this.